attribute that, but you know who the people are that are really into the reptilian takeover uh, way of, of going about this. Individual psychodynamic. Well, that has to do with the fact that this represents the repressed desires uh, for some kind of powerful uh, instinctual sexual relationship on the part of the individuals. I, I won't even do anything with that. The biology, we do have a brain. The brain stem is thought of as reptilian. The lower uh, instinctual parts of our brains are uh, very similar to the reptilian brains. Uh, we are uh, they're, they're, uh, what our relationship is to the dinosaurs and the early reptilian beings, the crocodiles and other reptilians are still here. Uh, what, uh, in terms of the evolution of species, uh, what is the um, uh, biology, phylogeny of that? The collective unconscious, this would have to do with um, ideas that are in our deeper souls unconscious that are common to people all over the world, uh, which would include uh, certain kinds of uh, images, including uh, the, the reptilians representing all the different things we have already mentioned, uh, powerful instinctual connections with primitive aspects of ourselves and so forth. Now, I mentioned transpersonal psychology because I found my own training in this area very valuable in doing this work. What this means, essentially, is that our, um, our um, being, our ourselves, is not limited to this physical body. In fact, our consciousness can travel. It can go through time and space. It can go back into the time of the dinosaurs when they were, uh, uh, became extinct. It can go into other dimensions of reality. In other words, that it can go into past lives. It can go into identification with almost any element uh, in, in the universe. And this is associated with the work of Stanislav Graf and um, is something that I, well, it doesn't make sense to recommend anything to anybody at this point, but uh, I think it is important to at least know the fundamental notions about transpersonal psychology because I think it is a, um, a major departure from traditional psychology. And for me, it's been helped me immensely in trying to, in some way, get myself around this uh, whole reptilian phenomenon. Metaphysical, symbolic, um, I won't dwell on that. It has to do with uh, the symbolisms of, and forms that uh, seem to have reptilian or snake-like uh, forms. Um, the um, uh, Emperor Constantine, when he... Uh, converted to Christianity. They showed him um, with a, uh, uh, his symbol was a sword uh, killing a serpent. Um, there are archetypal snake and spiral forms uh, throughout nature. The, um, uh, in medicine, the, uh, the caduceus is a, are snakes uh, uh, surrounding the uh, staff of, of Hermes. Um, Similarly, there are symbols of transformation in alchemy, which have to do with reptilian energies, with, with um, the Ouroboros, which is a, a snake biting its own uh, tail, which uh, represents a transformation. Um, now, the mythico-religious uh, area, again, this relates to the collective unconscious. Uh, dragons, uh, serpents, have a, I'll, I'll take these quickly one by one. Um, dragons and serpents show up in almost all the mythologies of the planet. Um, in the pre-Greek Mycenaean and Minoan mythology, they are creator nurturant figures, but little by little in Greek and later Christian and uh, Islamic myth uh, mythology, the dragons, they may be guardians, but they also become, uh, they lose their protector function and they become uh, more seen as more dangerous, destructive uh, figures. Um, although there's always a kind of ambivalence about dragons. They're, they're sort of wonderful and beautiful and creative, but they're also dangerous and, and threatening. And uh, again, what, the, how they, what they represent in terms of our own uh, deeper selves is, is important question. Um, 
you all, you know, we're, we're flooded these days, especially these days, which is an interesting question of, of um, fascination with uh, dinosaur, uh, dinosaurs, uh, crocodiles, reptiles of all sorts, monsters, uh, Godzilla, um, the Komodo dragons, there's lots of TV specials. I never heard of them until recently. Uh, other, other reptiles. Um, some cultures think that uh, dinosaur bones, when they discover them, are, are actually really dragon bones. There are uh, creation myths involving cosmic battles between uh, reptilians. There are reptilian ancient astronauts in many creative uh, uh, myths. Uh, Rene Boulay, who's a uh, Ted Strain and Paul Price have written a book that uh, came out in 1990 called Serpents and Dragons, The Story of Mankind's Reptilian Past. Until I got into this work, I never would have taken this seriously. Um, but they talk about, uh, in the cultures, Egypt, India, Norse, Celtic, Sumerian, early, uh, even Babylonian, Christian, there are creation myths that involve uh, great giant lizards and dragons that are the ancestors of humans, the dragons having intercourse with women and producing offspring that are, the, are heroes. Uh, uh, you can, there's a huge mythology on this. Uh, there's a, um, a challenge, however, to um, There was, <laughs> it was kind of amusing. On the uh, Amazon uh, uh, website, um, the, I've tried to learn, I couldn't get this book, but I tried to uh, learn more about it. And there was a lot of people had very positive reactions, but there were some negative ones. You know, they give stars. Well, this guy didn't like this at all. Uh, he gave it one star. Other people gave it four, three, you know. And he, he said he, he was objecting to the, um, the attack on scripture. He said, uh, we should accept that he, he's challenging this. He, the, the writers it should. We're supposed to accept that scripture is a watered-down attempt to explain the mysterious in mythological terms, but that Sumerian texts are exacting, always to be taken and interpreted literally. Has this guy considered that what he takes so literally may also be an effort to explain in mythological terms something that the writers of Sumerian texts couldn't fathom in terms they could understand? Just because an ancient carving depicts a person ensconced in feathers or reptilian attire doesn't literally mean that there were such creatures. Fair enough. So I just wanted to put that in there uh, as a kind of sobering thought. Um, uh, Bud Hopkins uh, correctly, I think, brings up the risk of what he calls a stew pot thinking, which is so you take lots of things, you put them all together as if they're all one thing. Probably it's okay if the stew, you know, is potable or uh, eatable, but uh, there, there is, uh, I am bringing a lot of things together that may or may not fit, just to show how the, in the mythic history of, of uh, the human race, the, the reptilian figures uh, uh, play a major role, and so when the experiencers have a strong connection with the reptilian past and actually encounter real reptilian beings, it makes this more uh, more relevant. And then, there, of course, are the serpent gods, uh, um, uh, Quetzalcoatl and the aboriginal rainbow serpents. And um, the snake itself is sometimes thought of as it representing immortality because it can shed its, its skin and, and so forth. Um, one of the, the um, experiencers that I've worked with uh, quite closely, has gotten very interested in this whole subject, has gone to uh, some of the uh, uh, Christian pagan churches like Rosslyn in Scotland and where there is a, a strong, there's strong dragon and snake symbolism and this dragon is often depicted as representing the masculine energy and the snake uh, as the feminine energy is, for example, in the uh, the, in Eastern philosophy, the Kundalini energy, which is like a coiled snake at the base of the of the spine. Now, in uh, Judeo-Christian or particularly Christian uh, mythology in Western culture, the 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 serpents don't get a very good rap. Um, uh, the Gnostics, uh, which is kind of the rejected part of Christianity, they, they, uh, they uh, t 
talk about the uh, archons, which are uh, reptilian beasts, which have a uh, reptilian body, heads like a lion, and they're kind of a predatory uh, dark uh, race. Um, Medusa